Snoober Thursday! Woo! And it's our final homebrew episode. The final. The final. One. It's the announce the winners of the homebrew episode. Well, there's only one winner. Which, I mean, we're going to do another show, right, in August? For like, hey, it's us brewing the beer, and now we're drinking the beer, and now we're doing... But that won't really be commercial, or that won't be homebrew because it's commercial then. What? So it is kind of like the final homebrew. Yeah, brew. it's the final homebrew version end. of the show. Oh, yes. we're doing the, I mean, the beer that... Yeah, we're going to do the beer the that, home that won... Okay. That we have yet right. to announce, but unless you're completely brain dead, you've probably figured out that Andrew Bell was our winner. Yay! Yay! Woo! Okay. Shirts, children <laughs> screaming. Um, and Andrew, tell us a little bit about the beer you brewed. Well, I sort of alluded to it on the last episode. Um, a lot of hops, a lot of New Zealand hops. It's an, uh, it's sort of in between XPA and an IPA um, with double IPA hoppage. Right on. Say. So, and that makes yeah, sense. a lot it's of New called, Zealand it's, hops. It's a New Zealand ale or New Zealand Island Pale Ale. Yeah, or uh, the working name is Organic Zeal Island Pale Ale. Right. So it uses a lot of New Zealand hops, very very aromatic, very yes. tasty. Um, but we are not going to see us drink that just yet. Yep. Um, we are actually yep. going to do the three runners up as well. Um, these were the three beers that, like, these, these four beers basically were the ones that we agonized over to just to pick a winner. And so I thought it was only fair to sample all of them because they were all phenomenal beers. So, um, so what do we have here? The first one is from uh, Peter Kennedy uh, from Simply Beer. Uh, it is a cardamom wit beer. Um, and I believe cardamom is like a spice. It is, it is yeah. a spice. It is a spice. It's not like a spice. It's not masquerading as a spice. No, um, it, it actually is, is a spice. It is its own spice. Um, this was a really, really, really great beer. Um, and I know that uh, Dan was Dan from Bison Brew, when he judged this beer, was very excited about the idea of brewing with cardamom. Uh, so that was a positive. And, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, Steve was uh, the only one there, uh, other than Bill. Representing that Thursday. That can tell you what actually happened at the judging. I wasn't there. Or Matt. Oh, we all was there in spirit. day jobs. <laughs> hey, guys, yeah. cheers to homebrewing. Cheers. cheers. I liked, what I liked a lot about this beer was the color of it. Like, it's it's a very, very light. It's um, about as pale it's as It's got you a can nice get. haziness for mm -hmm. the uh, wit beer. It's good looking. Um, yeah, but it just, it's a phenomenal looking beer. The cardamom definitely pops on it, but it's, it, it, it blends well with like the like estriness of the yeast. I'm, I'm glad it's not excessive, though. And we're pouring it, one it, out. It's in moderation, which we're is We're pouring one out for our dead homies right here, who's not dead. He's just behind the camera. The camera man. Can feel free to step up and grab that beer whenever he would like. Grab it, Brad. Or, or Grab it. Like, grab it. Or maybe he could be handed, too, because he's kind of, like, hidden <laughs> away in uh, his as the corner. Camera's he's he's bendy. There. He can do what he, know, he needs oh, to. Oh, it's a hand. Thank it's you, a thing. <laughs> so. This uh, is really tasty. Yeah. Wow. I love the carbonation on it, too. It's really nice. Yeah, I got like a big Sluffy. glass full of head, so. You're welcome. And you're complaining because? Yeah. Mm. Well, because, you know, I don't yeah, normally, I don't, yeah, I don't normally <laughs> complain when Matt gives me a head, but right now I wanted some beer. I had to be Matt. Well, Matt poured, that's why, so. It's because uh, I'm complaining that it had to be Matt? <laughs> <laughs> True. Touche. Burn. Oh, boy. Um, yeah. So anyway. So about uh, the beer, um, yeah. it's it's nice. The cardamom actually has a really nice balance to it. I mean, this seems like a spice that it would be really easy to go overboard with. It right. Is but really it's not. Nice, it's it's all it's really forward in the nose, but in the flavor, it's got a nice balance with the well, other. What I'll spice. say about it's Peter's, integrated really well. Yeah, yeah. What I'm what I'll say about Peter's beers, from what I've had, is that he is very 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 good at balancing flavor profiles in beer. Um, the uh, peanut butter chocolate porter was phenomenal. Um, even the tequila beer that he sent me at one point had just enough tequila flavor from the barrel aging that it was good, but it wasn't like, oh God, I'm drinking a tequila shot in a beer, you know? So the next beer we're going to be going to. Now keep in mind, these are all organic. Yes. Like mm -hmm. these are the final brews that everyone made with organic ingredients. So they're all 100% organic. Um, and yeah, they, this one was great. Like, yeah. There's no taste yeah. difference between, I think, organic beers and non-organic beers. Not to a certain, right, yeah. to a certain level. I think the only, the only, the only difference in my opinion is that you're limited by ingredients. Yeah. So I think yeah. Daniel uh, Bison Brewing is a good example of that because um, there's a lot of beers I've seen him s s say in videos he'd like to do a beer like this, but you can't get those hops, right. so he's not going to do the beer. So next up is uh, Kelsey McNair. Um, he sent us an organic raspberry stout. 
And I think this was made with uh, White Lab's newest yeast. Yes, oh, the, the San Diego, Diego Super, Super, Super San Diego. Yeah, I do want to try that. So zero nine zero. Is that's that supposed to be the yeah. poor brewing street? Oh, man, I know the numbers. Yeah. I don't know I what walk it into is. a homebrew shop and say, get me 090, and they're like, yeah. Is that in stock? Want. Like, do you guys have that? Yeah, or? yeah, it, it is out. And it's kind of funky because, like, it doesn't look Small anything screen. like the White Labs. It has, like, a weird oh. graphic and, like, okay. the label's blue. We need to save just huh. a little so bit it's, it's, it's kind of weird, but, like, I guess what it is is it's supposed to be kind of like 001, only it's even cleaner. And like it, quicker, too. yeah, and fast. That's a big thing. And it's the San Diego super yeast because yeah. it's it ferments out in like three days or something like that. Mm, something insane. insane, and it's also more flocculent and a little bit drier. What I liked about this beer a lot was that the raspberry is um, overpowering in a non overpowering way. If that makes any sense at I all, I can really. It's smell very it. raspberry forward. Yeah. yeah, it's very raspberry forward, but it's not so much that you're like, oh god, raspberries. But like, I can almost taste the seeds of the raspberry. And that's one of the things I really like about it. It's very fleshy. Fret and yeah. fresh, though, mm -hmm. too. Yeah, very fresh. Vibrant. Yes. I think it's... Dude, if I made this beer, I'd be really happy with it. It's like the, the raspberry is just... Comp it's, I see what you're saying about... There's a lot of raspberry on this. But it's complementing the beer mm -hmm. perfectly. Yeah, it's still, it still has a good like chocolatey kind oh, of character. Oh, and then yeah. like even after you let it sit for a while... That's when you really get like that raspberry aftertaste going yeah. on. That's it, what I just it's got a little it. tannic too with like the yeah, seeds. Yeah, exactly. It kind of dries it out. It almost reminds wow. me of like a raspberry seas. Yeah. A seas candy, you yeah. know? That is and bizarre. A good now, this this beer, um, along with our next beer, uh, kind of while we weren't looking, joined forces and created a super beer, which we will be trying after we try this next beer. You okay. get the. I'm sorry. The raspberries on this are just weird. Like how <laughs> it starts. You taste raspberries right up front, and you get the. You know, you get the the maltiness going mm -hmm. on. It's, you know, it's it's all nice. And then as it's starting to finish out, it dries up a bit, and you get a different character of the raspberry. The and then you let it the sit a little longer, and you get this other raspberry flavor that happens. It's, it's like, like the, the raspberries never stop. Yeah, it's but like it's not. Seeds. It's because it's a real raspberry. I mean, when people think raspberry and beer, most of the time it's like an artificial raspberry flavor. Like yeah, Lindemann's kind of plasticky sort yeah. of. Yeah, um, it's really good. The raspberry that you would pour over the top of a bad cheesecake in a Denny's at four in the morning after drinking. Yeah, it's a, if it's, it's at a, a Denny's, and, if it's at a Denny's at four in the morning, it is a good <laughs> cheesecake. <I'm just> <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy. Um, I mean, it's okay. a good burger, you know, whatever. Everything's great at four in the morning. So, You're there for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Next up, <laughs> we're going to be doing Jeff Randall's beer. Um, he is the the brewer, the home brewer that likes to screen print his own bottles, which I think is really cool. It's awesome. classy. That's um, ridiculous. Really awesome. And he even well, wrote like a whole. He printed his own bottles, he had them screen printed. Either way, it's pretty cool. Potato, <laughs> potato, potato. There's lots of potatoes on this show. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a uh, rook. Whoa. Yeah. Hello. Again. Calm this down. is a Hopefully very John excited. Have to save the beer again. Yeah, this is a very excited Rook Coffee Stout. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, That's one of my favorite New River Thursday moments, I have to say. <laughs> oh, speaking of which. Uh, oh, no. I don't, ever, I don't ever do the magic shots. Not on camera, anyway. All right. Now that I, I just want to see it once. Yeah, I just want to see Brad so. diving out here to try and save this is actually from Jeff Randolph, and I think I said Randolph earlier, but it's Randolph. Um, Harmony Brewing. This is a coffee Imperial Russian Stout. Uh, it's made with organic, uh, cold-pressed Guatemalan coffee with one vanilla, uh, Madagascar vanilla bean. Mm -hmm. So you get a ton of really good coffee aroma off the nose. You get so much of the flavor of the coffee. It's definitely like what I would, this is what I would crack at eight in the morning when I have bacon and eggs and... I'm going to get my day going. Dude, yeah. this and pancakes would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. The that's like mocha beer. Yeah, or like maybe at four fest. in the morning when I've been drinking all night and I'm at a Denny's, <laughs> you know, going no, back to no the Denny's, Denny's at four in the morning. All the best. With all a grand eight. slam. Hell yeah. Yeah, all the best Denny's are BYOB. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> are there BYOB Denny's? No, there aren't. Uh, are you um, kidding me? <laughs> at four in the morning, I don't know. at four in the morning, as long as you're not fighting with anybody and paying your bill, they'll let you open up whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Did I miss something? Yeah. It's like, hey, you're here at four in the morning. You're not tripping balls. Come exactly. do whatever you please. You know. So what we're this gonna is, do now this is, is really um, good. and we're gonna have to do it one glass because I think we poured a little bit too much of this out. But um, basically, I'm gonna take a, a 50/50 mix of the uh, raspberry stout and the coffee stout. So we're gonna have community glassware. Community yeah. glassware. It would be. I have glass. cooties. Yes. This is what you call blending. This is a blended. This is a blended beer. Um, what we found with this is that 
Brad Hand. The raspberry mm-hmm. cuts down on the coffee, and the co- coffee cuts down on the raspberry, and they form together to form this like super beer that's amazing. And I'm probably over talking it for everybody here, but you better drink it so I can drink it. I, I want to try this. Yeah. You've already experienced this. Oh, he did, right? Yeah. You shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> this beer will never exist again. <laughs> And after sharing this experience, we are all now one. Mm, it's got a really balanced. It balances you know, out the aromas on both of them, and it just it gives it a nice little sweet, fruity flavor on the back end that just is so delicious. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, the coffee and the raspberry really, like you said, they help meld together. Right. And... Oh, that's epic. Yeah, it got to the point where it was like, wow, we had we had picked we had picked yours to win. Whoa! But then Dan was like, I oh, really kind of want to bring these two guys out and try <laughs> to brew this beer. So it may happen. It's not going to be our thing. It's going to be something that Dan does if he decides to do so. But I know he's really interested in having Jeff and, and Kelsey come together and kind of and try to create this as a single beer. It is a good beer. It's yeah. got like a bunch of different layers. There was a lot of there was right a lot in. of beer geekery excitement going on at Beer Revolution when we, when that happened. So um, it was pretty crazy. Oh, welcome to the show, Brad. Ah. <laughs> Where did he come from? <laughs> Isn't that good? <laughs> we have to have like if you Brad, want, you can Brad pour Mime. the rest in your glass and keep it. Brad Mime because he yeah. doesn't. Uh, oh my god. That was good. Yeah, that's excellent. So that's well, a that's a really really. Interesting cool. and good like, combo. Yeah, well, yeah. that, but a side thing that happened from this. Right, know, it was it, such it was such a kind of like, um, Bill was just kind of sitting there, he's like, I wonder what would happen if I put this beer with this beer. And it was like, oh my God, Dad, drink this immediately. <laughs> and it was just like, we just all got so excited over it. And it would, like, there was a long discussion about like, can we do both of these people? Can this be the winning beer? Like, can the winning beer be a beer that wasn't submitted but was blended? And it was like, no, 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 we can't do that. Like, <laughs> I had to kind of like step in and be like, no, 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 that can't happen. Like, we're just yeah. pick one of the beers that was brewed. But um, they just were so excited about how well these two beers played together. And so I, I really do see something in the future. And even Kelsey and Jeff, you know, hook up on Twitter. Just saying. Well, I did. Also, some of the best beers in the world blended beers. Oh, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, there's big, solid big beer. Blenderies out there. Exactly. Like, yeah, we just need to bring Tommy uh, Arthur in on this and I don't know how to say it. Care okay, I'm going to say it. Before that. Yeah. Like Dree Fontaine. Yeah. How do you say it? Drive one oh, tiny. Okay. I think. I don't know. I still haven't had anyone confirm that. I'm mean, making an ass of myself. Well, they brewed for, you know, they brewed and blended for a long time, and now they just strictly blend. Yeah, Hanson's and is another one that, I, th- I think Hanson's, they only blend. And they make some great goos. Blending I mean, is an goos, art goos, form goos, in and of yeah, itself. And, sure. uh, you know, New Belgium is a, an American example of that, that, you know, with Lauren Salazar and her, she's so good at it. Yeah. And, like, their sours are so awesome just because she is so good at what she does. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was because they had fooders, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, the beer is also a major thing. Any chance that I can get to say fooders. <laughs> also, a former, Fooder. a former Rodenbach brewer doesn't hurt either. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Peter, Peter Bro- 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 Brokert. Bro- yeah. Bro- 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 so, on that note, what we're going to do is we're going to rinse our glasses. Good we're going to take nice. a few minutes, and we're going to come back with the winning beer. Um, and... Uh, Pretty much the only beer that matters. Yeah. I'm just kidding. No, I didn't say that. Boom. Now we're going to do our winning beer. Nice clean glass. Yay. Yeah. Cue children screaming and whatever here. Um, woo! woo! Uh, this is, is a the Organic Zeal Island Pale Ale. And uh, this uh, during the during the judging process, uh, the statement was made that there is not a commercial pale ale that's better than this beer. That's high praise. Wow. So um, I'm going to pour for the master. The... And I'm going to pour for me. Look at that perfect beer. And then you know what? You guys are... Oh, just kidding. Oh. Oh, there you go. You're a violent pourer. Too. I am. I follow, a, the Randy, I, pour. well, I follow the Randy Mosher style of pouring straight down and getting a nice aggressive head on it. That way you get all, you unlock all the aroma and all the, the goodness of the beer is just out there like, Oh, drink me! I can smell this from here. Yeah, yeah seriously. Dude. Isn't that there crazy? There's quite a bit of... Yeah, yeah, see, 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 yeah see the aroma, Brad, Brad the aroma on this this beer is Epic. freaking amazing. Holy shit! Like I just, it was like when we popped this and opened it, it was like, oh my god, it's so it's so delicious. Wow. I stuck my nose in it. Um, <laughs> and and, and what, this is about um, probably a month and a half to two months in the bottle, so it's fa- like just having had it at all I the just, points I in the process. Wa- I just watched Brad orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> that just happened. Oh, what woman hasn't? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, okay. 
just just Andrew, seen, just seen it in the there. process. This has faded a little bit, but no. Cheers. I mean, Holy this is, the, the hop aroma on this is crazy and amazing, and it's not like it's not the hop aromas where it's like. Oh, it's got this huge hot profile, but it's like, yeah, but it's not a really good hot profile. <laughs> you know, it's like this is a really well balanced, well put together hot profile. So. This was this was which hops? Is there three? Right? There's three. There is uh, Nelson um, from oh, all, Nelson. all three are New oh, Zealand. Wow. Nelson, obviously the famous New Zealand hop. There was Rakau. Mm -hmm. We were trying Rakau. Rakau. We were trying to figure out what it is. R A K A U. You figure it out. And then New Zealand Cascade, which is a whole different beast. I was shocked by that. I was smelling the hops on the brew day, and it's 9% alpha acids versus like 5 for American Cascade. Oh, wow. It smells nothing like it. It's complete passion fruit. Like, huh. I went into it, like, I thought my favorite hop was Nelson. I smell this New Zealand Cascade, and it's like, this smells incredible. Yeah, wow. I gotta get me some of them. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. It totally has... nice Cascade pro profile, in, or the... the passion fruit profile. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. it's so tropical. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm amazed at how tropical it's, it's so, I'm sold on New Zealand. Yeah, it's so New cool. Zealand, like, right? coming from New Zealand, like, you kind of have that, like, Fiji, New Zealand, kind of, like, tropical hobbits running around, wizards doing stuff. That's what this beer makes me think of. <laughs> yeah, no, it actually That's makes me excited. Tastes like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, makes me excited because I'm planning a uh, an international IPA for using all New Zealand hops for... IPA Day. International IPA International, International IPA, IPA Day, which IPA is coming Day. up. That's August. Which will be our next show, actually, right? next week. Mm -hmm. So next week we're going to be doing, it's a good good, good segue. Nice. That I just ruined by telling you it was a good segue. That's okay. Um, so <laughs> next week we're going to be doing I International IPA Day. Um, it's going to be a little bit different than our normal show because um, there are going to be a lot of beers involved. Oh, it's um, gonna suck. Yeah, it's uh, going to be such insane. a horrible problem. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you know, because we normally do a single beer or... You know, maybe, like, for the homebrew shows, we did four, but normally we do a single beer, and we focus on that beer. We're going to kind of be barreling through some of these, but what we're going to try to do, based on the beers that we get for the show, is try to address each of the individual styles of IPA that are out there. So, like, a black IPA, a rye IPA, double IPA, single IPA, that kind of thing. East Coast. English, East Coast, English right. IPA? Mm. Perhaps. I don't think any English, but we will be getting some New Zealand. We'll have the Hop Zombie on the show, which is going to be epic because it's from Epic Brewing. So um, it's going to be a great show, and uh, we may have something special in mind for it. We may not. That is as, you know, we'll see how it goes. as it gets. Yeah. Yeah, but I saw, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still like. This, this, the aroma on this thing is yeah. insane. Yeah, so like, back to this beer. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so now, now that we, now that you've won, um, and we're going to be uh, next week, we're going to be flying up to mm. Berkeley, yep. and we're going to be brewing this beer at Berkeley. Uh, this beer will be featured at GABF. Um, I'm ecstatic. I know I'm from certain excited. contacts that certain breweries have already bought six kegs of this beer. It's not a program. An entry either. It's a straight up commercial entry. Commercial yeah. entry from Bison Brewing. If this doesn't win something, I'm going Andrew. to stab someone in the neck. <laughs> so you know, in a couple of months, you could be standing there watching your beer get announced as the gold medal winner for Pale Ales. That'd be, that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is. I can see it happening, dude. This is freaking delicious. Thanks, guys. Mm. Like I, oh. and it's organic. Right. And it is organic. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, I don't, and I don't know what that means. It's greener for the environment, right? It's better for the environment. It's yeah. probably better for you. No well, pesticides got, or anything. Yeah, exactly. Like that. But pesticides you know, it's, 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 it's so good. It's a better way to grow. <laughs> you know. Basically, this is how beer was made. You know, a thousand years a thousand ago. Years ago where... Hopefully, it tastes slightly yeah, better. Yeah, <laughs> a thousand years ago, it did not taste as good. No. Wild yeast, <laughs> also partially less, converted beer. Yeah. Also, less stainless steel. But you know, <laughs> if you wanted to get really authentic, you probably wouldn't have these cool hops that we have now yeah. that have been chemically like perfected, no. genetically you know, created. Yeah, probably American don't. style base yeah. malt, German style like specialty malt. Right. Yeah, New probably, Zealand hops. Yeah, probably American no. Yeast. Probably no New Zealand Cascade in you know uh, beer from you know Sumeria. No, probably not. Yeah, but it's a beer from Samaria, which kind of rad. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, Gilgamesh brewed this beer. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so um, Andrew, thank you very much. We look forward to the finished commercial so product, good. which we'll be doing too. another show about, as well as showing some of the B-roll of the brew day, which will be a lot of fun. And uh, until next time, as always, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers. <laughs>